So hello everyone. As you can see, I'm here um, amongst the great, beautiful Chinese countryside. I wish I was. Well, this is a part of a virtual tour I went on online by a nice young lady called Lily, who showed us through her parents' tea plantation. Did a little tea ceremony. It was beautiful. And a nice little walk around. It was beautiful. I took a few um, screenshots. So one can see what a beautiful place that she lived in. So I'm going to do a talk called Look for the Divine. We must all try and do that, Look for the Divine. There's a story in the Lotus Sutra that I'm often telling concerning the Bodhisattva never despise. This exalted being was in fact Gautama Buddha in a previous incarnation. Never despised was so named because he would say to people, I do not despise you, or you'll become a Buddha. He would see the Buddha nature in all beings, even when he was mocked and jeered and beaten with sticks. He would simply walk on a distance and call back that all his persecutors would one day be Buddhas. We can all learn a great lesson from this and realize that everyone has within them a spark of the divine. This can be obscured sometimes, sometimes for lifetimes, but never extinguished. It is better always to try to look for the good in others rather than the bad. We can all remember never despise and try in our humble way to emulate his attitude. But in this society, it tends to be that, um, that people may do a hundred good things but just one bad thing. But the bad thing is remembered and held against them with a hundred good, or the 99 maybe, because the 99 out of 100 good things are ignored. People's lives are ruined because they make a mistake. And Jesus said, forgive not seven times, but indeed 70 times, seven times. So it's so sad that in this world that people are not aware of the divine nature. It says in the voice of the silence, which is translated by H.P. Lovatsky, alas, alas, that all men and women, of course, should possess a liar, the one with the great soul, and that possessing it, a liar, should so little avail them. So people live so far below their potential and constantly mourn about their shallow existences. In reality, they are linked to the living universe of divine light. If only they could be awakened to this fact, then they would surely be transformed into confident beings who are able to find joy in the most difficult situations. The divine self deep within our hearts is capable of rescuing even the most dissolute wretch from the mire that he has placed himself or herself in. And this is by the effects of his or her karma. A letter from the master KH says, in the eyes of the masters, no one is ever utterly condemned. As the lost jewel may be recovered from the very depths of the tank's mud, so can the most abandoned snatch themselves from the mire of sin. If only the precious gem of gems, the sparkling jet gem germ of the Atma is developed, the Atma being the spiritual self. So only the precious gem of gems, the sparkling germ of the spirit is developed. Each one of us must do the, the, this for, the, for himself or herself. Each can if he or she but will and persevere. There is limitless hope for all those who try to grasp the message of the masters. The way that we feel and relate to others may fluctuate in our day-to-day -day lives. But that dimension of our being that is at one with the infinite is constant. There may be times that we feel heavy and inadequate due to some illness or failing. We should be comforted to know that the real man the true man or woman is never affected by any of this. 
there is a great hope in this fact. It is a reason to be optimistic at all times, deep within, even if the outer man is struggling against terrible odds. The answers may not come easily. And at the end of the tunnel, the end of the tunnel may seem to be a dream at times. But we are speeding towards that light that lies at the end of that tunnel. Unless we are consciously evil and work diligently against our, against our progress and towards our destruction. Yet Gautama Buddha said of his evil cousin Devadatta, who had many times tried to kill him. Devadatta, after his departure and innumerable kalpas have passed, will become a Buddha. Reminiscent of the Bodhisattva never despised. This again is a very wonderful teaching. That even the most evil only delay their evolution, albeit until another Manvantara, which is millions of years in the future, in the worst cases. What is time? Surely an illusion, and we are all aware of the eternal now that the masters so often mention, and HPB mentions in their writings, HP Lovatsky in their writings. The evil one is a victim of his self-created illusions and it depends upon him how long it takes to shake off these, these illusions and delusions. As I wrote earlier, in the eyes of the master, no one is ever utterly condemned. We are very much the victims of our own doubts and fears. <clears throat> The English mystical poet William Blake wrote this in a verse, this verse in a poem entitled London. <coughs> Excuse me. In every cry of every man, in every infant's cry of fear, in every voice, in every band, the mind forged manacles I hear. Mind forged manacles. We Forge our own, our own manacles by, by, by the mind. So it is clear to see that most of our problems are indeed mind forged. If our lives are cluttered with worries about minor problems concerning ourselves and our small circle of family and friends, we will be unable to focus on the weighty concerns of humanity in general. It is a great boon to have this ability to understand at least some of the teachings of theosophy. And we should think of the karma that has led us towards this point in our lives, whether it's theosophy or some other spiritual, genuine spiritual system. We talk of good and bad karma, but this is not the way to look at things. What may appear to us to be painful and destructive may in fact be a lesson being learned and a step taken on this path of a spiritual progress. On the other hand, a pleasant event may signify very little and may even delay our onward march. If we become too engrossed in the pleasure or allow ourselves to be consumed by the illusion of its value, then we can be led astray. The fact that we are in reality divine beings is a message that we should always be trying to get across to our brothers and our sisters. To this one fact, can help us to bring about a, a true universal brotherhood of humanity, regardless of race, creed, sex, caste, or colour. This is the very, very essential, important, well, it's not just important, it's essential thing about teaching about theosophy. It was brought here to, to unite all the different religions. Because no matter how one is de devoted to one's own religion, one always develops a prejudice against other religions, <clears throat> no matter how subtle. So we have to get beyond religion, way beyond religion, and realize the divine truth behind them all. That's the only thing that's going to unite us and help us towards a universal brotherhood. If we can understand it through our studies that divinity is present in every atom throughout the universe, that this will help us to realize that all separateness is an illusion, and that we all share a common consciousness on higher levels of being. 
This is also the secret of real love. She's far above the sentimental and sensual emotions that we equate with the word in modern civilization. It's a pity that our children are not educated as to the true value of the lives that they lead so that they can begin to, to function as true human beings rather than the, than the often confused individuals that they become due to the inadequate information given to them in schools and universities. Inwardly, they are not satisfied with material facts, although outwardly, they may not be aware of this. Students of theosophy and spirituality are aware that the real truth cannot, cannot be framed in words, that the illumination must come from within. Certainly the vast majority of people today have been given a stone when they asked for bread. And this stone is weighing heavy on their minds so that they become disillusioned and depressed. It is time that they were given the spiritual food that they need by those that are capable of giving it. That was the original, original intention of the Theosophical Masters, to train people in the art of compassionate living, just as their master Gautama Buddha had done 2,500 years earlier. We should be aware of the fact that the, the, the Buddha still carries on his work today, and that he was responsible for the founding of the Theosophical Movement, which was started to help to enlighten humanity. The masters wanted a universal brotherhood, a real universal fraternity started. And the Theosophical Masters have made no secret of the fact that they regarded Gautama Buddha as the man of men, and they've adopted his policy of giving everyone who is willing to, to live, uh, giving everyone who is willing to live the life. Give it everyone who is willing to live the life, the opportunity to follow the path that leads to initiation. They are also inspired by the Buddha's teaching of the solidarity of all men. And I would say the solidarity of all living things. It's important for us to show to others that theosophy is a system of thought, meditation and action this totally optimistic. It is very relevant in a world tormented by so many troubles and sorrows and conflicts. If we exude an aura of intellectuality and gloominess, then we are not valid in today's society. The world has moved on a pace in some ways. We must be aware of that. Methods of communication have vastly improved from 100 years ago with the internet, etc. And so we need to take that into account. Theosophy has taken its place in the kaleidoscopic panorama of modern day spiritual thought. So many teachers have come from the East, some genuine and others not so genuine. A thorough grounding in, in genuine theosophical teaching gives us the ability to know the difference. This is one of the most important effects that the study of theosophy has on the consciousness of the aspirant. Another is the awareness of the transcendent nature of truth and the fact that all great religions and systems of thought lead to the same place in inverted commas. This realization makes our studies of the spiritual writings of different cultures literally come alive and enriches our perception of their value no end. It's a wonderful alchemical process that we can all share and which leads us along the avenues of thought and meditation that we may never have believed possible at the outset of our journey. But perseverance brings its rewards. Even if we do not wish for a reward. And theosophical study wears away the clouds that hide the sun of truth. It is, is as if we pass through gates of gold and find ourselves in some strange but beautiful paradise. Gradually, we become accustomed to our surroundings and attune ourselves to the enhanced beauty. The breaking down of the barriers that give us the feeling of separateness is the highest practice 
of the spiritual path. Once we begin to see the divinity in another, we will really begin to understand, understand the meaning of the words of never despise and know what he meant when he exclaimed, I do not despise you, for you will all become Buddhas. I've mentioned the Bodhisattva never despised before and gave a talk on him as well. And it's been a big influence on my life. Um, that one thing that you can, you can see the divinity in others despite what they do to you. It's not easy, of course, our, our natural reaction is to is to um, seek revenge if someone does something wrong against us. That doesn't make sense. I mean, I, you always see these films where people um, look for revenge. Or if, if someone suffers, they want others to suffer as they've suffered. Uh, uh, which it doesn't make sense to me because you think if a person had suffered, they would say, well, I don't want anyone to have to go through what I've been through, or my family's been through, or my country's been through. Therefore, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll try to make sure that I spread only peace and, and love around, and uh, rather than cause more destruction and more pain and more suffering in the world. But people don't think logically, in the true sense of logically, the spiritual logicality, if there's such a word. If not, I've just made one up. <laughs> so there is a word now. Yeah, um, it, it is true. We are divine beings. You know, we must start to live as divine beings. Think of ourselves as divine beings. We have this spirit that fire cannot burn, water cannot wet, wind cannot dry, swords cannot pierce. It's beyond the personal self. Personal self is limited. It's where all our suffering and pain, physically, mentally, and morally comes from. The true self is behind that, like the eye of the storm. It's calm, it's tranquil. It's always peaceful, it's untouched by any of the sufferings that the personality goes through. So we have to find that self, that's our haven. That's our sanctuary. That's our true spiritual place. A place of retreat. A place of calmness. A place of peace. A place of love. A place of harmony. A place of hope, optimism, joy. All those things that are our birthright. All those things that we are in essence. And we will become those things even if it takes a million years or a million seconds, we don't know, time's an illusion. You know, one minute can be a thousand years, a thousand years can be one minute. Time is an illusion. We must think of ourselves as these divine beings, as children of the light, as denizens of eternity, as true human beings. And to be true human beings, we have to become humane. You must become humane. If people give in to anger, many religions give in to anger if the God or the, the spiritual being is insulted or whatever. But that shows that their religion isn't teaching them to look for the divine in others, to be, to be forgiving, to be compassionate, to be loving towards others. And that religion then loses its validity, loses its meaning, loses its purpose. The truth is always peaceful, it's always tranquil, it's always serene, it's always uplifting, it's always hopeful, it's always truthful, it's always beautiful, in the true sense of the word beauty. It lifts us, gives us wings, if you like, spiritual wings to fly beyond all this craziness, this insanity, this it goes on in the world, it goes in people's hearts because they don't realize who they are, because they're, they're blinded to who they are and what they are, and what they can become, what their potential is, what they will become if only they awaken to the truth 
the awaken to the spiritual nature, they get to dissolve all the illusions, the my or the illusion that holds them back, that holds them down, that makes them see through a glass darkly. Makes them not aware of the truth and beauty that lies in another soul. Why could people harm another? Why do people harm other people? Why do people want to kill and want, want to maim and want to hurt people in, in various ways? It's just total insanity. We're all brothers and sisters upon this planet. We're all to work towards a universal brother, sisterhood of humanity, regardless of race creed, sex, caste, or colour. That's the only thing that matters. That's the thing we should all be coming together. All people on the spiritual path, whether it's a theosophical path or the Buddhist path or the Hindu or the Muslim or the Christian, must all realise that the same truth lies behind all these religions. And we must all come together, inspired by this oneness, by this one reality and live together in peace and harmony as true brothers and sisters. So thank you for listening. <clears throat> Hopefully I will see you very, very soon. The thing I have to say is Om Shanti, 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 peace, 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 peace on earth and goodwill towards all beings. <clears throat>